Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday Wanderings. Here we are again, and the weeks move on, don't they? We're heading towards, inexorably towards Christmas. How are you feeling about it? All a bit strange, isn't it? However, we've got something really encouraging for you this morning, and we've got a conversation with somebody called David Conley. David is part of the church here at Thornbury, and he has worked for many years... I mean many years, at one of our local prisons, supporting and encouraging faith amongst the prison community there. And I'll leave Dave, David to tell you all about it in a moment. Can I just encourage you to continue to stay plugged into uh, the stuff that's being put out on the internet by us and the stuff that's coming out from the office. You will notice that there are a number of things coming up over the Christmas period we are going to have a Christmas Eve carol service which will be a churches together carol service in Thornbury it will be online from six o'clock on Christmas Eve that is there will also also be a socially distanced kind of reflective Christmas Eve service at the church of course numbers will be limited you have to book up online but if you would like to do that we are putting that together David and I will be leading that there be an opportunity for those who want to come to something like that to come. Six o'clock, just a short service uh, as we reflect on uh, the Christmas story and this wonderful message of God becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us. It's truly astounding stuff. And so that's for you. Uh, you'll be able to book up soon online. Also to say on Christmas morning at 10 p.m. there will be a Zoom Christmas morning service led by Mike Levy and other people, will, lots of other people will be taking part. I dare say it will be a bit chaotic because that's the way that Zoom things seem to be. But uh, please do come along for that. I guess it'll be about half an hour, not very long, but a good way to kick off Christmas Day. Anyway, I'm going to hand you over now to Dave. God bless you and be with you today. So good morning, everybody. Here we are uh, again with uh, a really interesting chat this morning with Dave, David Connolly, and it's lovely to have David with us. Hello, David. Hello, everyone. I'm good in Paul. Yeah, it's really good to have you. And do you just want to kind of tell us a, a little bit about yourself, just to kind of set the scene before we get on with talking about what we're going to talk about? Well, I come from South Wales, and um, my first job was actually on a dairy farm and sheep. So I got to know the cows very well. There was Annie and Valerie, Pinky and Irene. They all had personalities. And then I went into engineering. and I joined a company which made heavy-duty diesel engines and farm machinery. So I got involved with development, test work, a lot of troubleshooting, and major international exhibitions. And then I went on, then I moved to Rennie Shores. And the job I had there took me across various divisions. So I got to know the products very well in a broad kind of way. I even spent time in the patent office, which is very central to Rennie Shores business, protected an intellectual property. So you've had a very, very interesting work life. I've been fortunate, been yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been uh, have you been a Christian for many years, David? Uh, a number of years with lots of ups and downs. <laughs> mm. So have you but been? Th but things get better. Good. That's good to hear. And you were, you, you've lived locally for quite a long time, haven't you? Well, I lived in the area for a long time, but I've also travelled a lot. And uh, for one, you know, I spent about ten months living in hotels all over the place. Mm. Uh, interesting experience there because go to a new church on a Sunday where you never and it's very interesting. Very often I would never speak to you. Mm. So the pub was a more friendly place. Mm. <laughs> That's an interesting experience. Mm. So I think more than a hello is not too difficult for most people to do, but that never seemed to arrive mm. on these occasions. Mm. It's such an important thing, isn't it? And I guess all of us in the church community, when we get meeting back together, we can kind of 
you know, if there are people we don't recognise, perhaps we, could, you know, as individuals, we could take the initiative and perhaps say hello to somebody we don't know. It's not always easy, but it's a good thing to do, isn't it? So you say, um, hello, are you new here? Well, I've been coming for 20 years. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's a start of a... But that's not well, the point. That's, the friendliness is the point. Yeah. So maybe what we should do when we start meeting back together, hopefully in the new year, um, we can... Uh, we can say well, we can start from day one again, can't we? We can all be new. I'm new to the church. That's right. <laughs> I've just started coming in. Anyway, David, the reason that we're apart from these interesting things about you, we're we're talking together this morning because you've had a long involvement with a uh, some work in a prison locally. We've got a couple of prisons on our doorstep, really, haven't we? And you've been involved in Lay Hill Prison for quite a long time, haven't you? Yes. Yes. So for what about, you... for about forty years, I think. Is that all? Maybe so the... no, maybe more than that, but certainly forty. Forty yeah. years, wow. Yeah. So what what sort of thing have you been doing there? Well the prison no, I I let's describe the categories of prisons first. There's four categories A, B, C, D. A is the most secure, D is an open prison. Now when you're in an open prison, that's part resettlement. Because some guys who have spent many, many years in prison they have to readjust to normal life. Um, and there's quite a nice atmosphere in Lay Hill because the conditions are pretty good. I mean, some prisons are horrendous. And also, um, any guy who doesn't obey the rules can be shipped out straight away. So it tends to be quite well behaved sort of prison. Um, now, we meet in the chapel once two, every two weeks to more or less have a Bible study discussion. Not many guys turn up. That's not their first port of call at chapel. But um, the people who do come are really, you know, really on the ball, quite clean. When you meet them for the first time, um, they seem like a normal bunch of guys. You know, you can meet anywhere. Uh, but people have their public face and their secret lives. And we never ask them what they've been up to. We're not allowed to, which is good. And uh, so over a period of time, we get to know them. So anyone who's a believer, and in, in Lay Hill, there's a great range of types of guys from nationally, nationally known figures to um, a lot of young guys. Very often, if I'd have desperate upbringing, they've had abuse, um, um, they've been victims, they've been excluded from school. So it's a good career path into crime. The next thing is drugs and gangs. And also, an interesting point, the law does not transform lives because over half the guys reoffend within two years. So the guys who meet us, who are believers usually, um, and before God, they're righteous because they're in Christ, but no one's perfect. So it's the direction you move is, is the next thing. So if, like, there could be three steps to listen to God, to trust him, and to obey. Now, the listening is not always easy because sometimes God seems very quiet. Other times he's a small, still voice. But if we have Bible study, you know how the way God deals with people, can you have good help with, with hearing what God would like you to do or the way you behave? So that's more or less a summary of what we do. Mm. In the prison, there's a lead chaplain who's Anglican, but there's 12 faiths represented, all, all respected equally. So I'm talking about Mormons, JWs, pagans, secular, Islam, Hindu, etc. They all get equal equal respect and time. So um, we represent the Christian aspect of things. Also, the Catholics do as well. It's a very good Catholic chaplain, I like. So that, we are, we come under the band of Christian, but all the other uh, types are, are there as well. So, uh, how many in the in the team that get involved in the services and so, the Bible studies. How many of you would there be, David? Well, there's four, this is an interesting point. There's four regular members and one other guy's just joined. We've got, we've got 
high level security to get in. And um, it would appear that two of them might not be able to continue due to um, the virus health reasons. So it'd be good to have a, the team God wants there who fill up any spaces. If anyone is interested, they can always come along as an observer. We can always arrange that. It's no problem. So um, if the two have to drop out, we would like to have more people mm. to, fill, to fill the team up. Because it's things like holidays and sickness. You can't be there every time. We meet once a fortnight for about an hour in the prison. It's a very exact time because of the, uh, the, the way the prison works. So so what, what would you say... Are the kind of qualities of somebody somebody would need to get involved in that work, David? Well, sometimes people who are meant to do that job feel unsuited for it. <laughs> I think they have to have a feeling that the kingdom of God is the most important thing to follow. Mm -hmm. um, and I sort of got there accidentally. By uh, someone inviting me along, I ended up sort of running it. So I think the first thing is to come along and see if it, if what if we could like to do it and see if God wants you to do it. I, I can't define qualities because everyone's different. But um, we do get support. The way it works normally, um, I do all the uh, admin behind with the uh, applications to go in and so on. But then we have a, a invited speaker. Um, David Tubb comes along regularly, and he might use a subject, which then turns into discussion. Now, the guys don't often say a lot, but over a period of time, we get to know them. I just explain, I, de I described three types of guys. One guy was very, very hard line in what he said. He actually spoke biblical truth, but his attitudes left me uncomfortable. And there are times when people say things which are a bit off the wall, perhaps. But you mustn't put people down. They've been rejected so much. So you say, well, that's one way of looking at it. Have you thought of this way? There's another guy who said, I can't forgive myself. And the reason was, the little girl said to him, why did you kill mommy? Mm. Why did you kill mommy? So the thing there is, he hasn't understood total forgiveness. I mean, Every crime has a consequence. That's why they're in prison. But with, but God has total forgiveness in, in the spiritual sense. And he hasn't understood that properly, which could turn to gratitude, not, not guilt. There's another guy who had a very, very bad temper. And he went to the prison chaplain. After 10 years in prison, he went to the chapel and he had an encounter with Jesus. And he said, I'm very angry. And he felt Jesus touch him. And he felt all of that anger drop off. And Jesus said to him, you are now a new creation. So after that, he became quite an evangelist in the prisons. He was there for many years. And um, I think he said he led about 66 guys to Christ. Mm. When he left prison about a year ago, he found the churches didn't want him. He said, stay away. Um, but one church took him on and then put so many restrictions on him, it wasn't worth going. He couldn't go to prayer meetings or anything. So I think there's a way around that. If a guy gives complete disclosure to the leadership, the leadership have a, have a duty to protect the, track, the, the church. Mm. So if the leadership knows, maybe a family who could provide hospitality because in the early church, they met in the homes, that was normal. And maybe the youth leader needs to know and certain boundaries are set. And then but the rest of the congregation cannot be told because they, they, they can meet the guys years today, not the way it was in the past. Mm. So you can protect the church and also make them welcome. Mm. So, so that's another aspect of church mm. life, I think.
Mm. Mm. Yeah, and a really important or challenging, but really important. I mean, it's amazing the work that you've done, but also the fact that God is so at work in the prisons, isn't it? You read um, so many stories. I know Alpha has been a very hugely successful tool, yes. really, hasn't it, in prisons? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And ma and many, many people have come to faith in Christ. And, you know, you feel you you obviously got a tremendous heart for these chaps. Yeah, I often think, there we are in the prison, having a Bible study with this group of guys. You couldn't do the same thing in a pub in Cornbury, you know. Mm. Mm. So we are privileged in a way to do that. Mm. Mm. Very much so. So you've said to us about the need that you have for more help. So wait, I haven't, don't know for sure if the two people can, can or not come, so I haven't talked about it with them yet. But I think it's unlikely they will return. So okay. if anyone else wanted to come along as an observer sometime, yeah. at the moment we're closed down. We can't go into prison. Yeah. But when things reopen, if anyone wants to come along as an observer to mm. see how they feel about things, that would be good. So you can keep us in the loop about That's ladies that and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies are very yeah. welcome. Yeah. And so there's that. But but how else can we pray, really? You know, uh, people often ask, how can we pray for various things? How can we pray for the, the ministry that you're involved in and the, the work in the prisons in general, perhaps? Well, we want the right team, obviously. Um, but it's a, I think it's a big issue, uh, like a wide issue, a, Across the church generally in the UK, mm. there's that verse which says, "If my we we respect and honour spirit-led leadership, but in the UK generally, there's this verse which says, if my people who are called by my name mm. will repent and turn from their sins, then I will heal the land. Mm. So I think the church at large um, is always, they have a big responsibility mm. for the nation's health. In spiritually and other ways, so I think the church, the church at large, um, is room for improvement there. I think mm. that can only be by Holy Spirit move, really. Absolutely, you can't just you can't just conjure it up. It has to be mm. a heart thing, mm. the Holy Spirit. Mm. Well, look, that's brilliant stuff, and I really thank you, David, for speaking to us today. And sharing your heart about the work that you've been doing for 40 years so thank you very much thank you best wishes to everyone <laughs>